Hi folks, uh, this is a video. Uh, this is a short video tutorial on uh, regression question one from week ten problem set. So uh, this is a question which uh, created some confusion in the class. That's why I've decided to go over this one more time uh, in this video short video tutorial. Uh, so the, the question says a supposed researcher using data on class size and, and average test scores from hundred third grade classes estimates the following uh, ordinary least squares regression. So the estimated model is test score hat equals 520.4 minus 5.82 times CS. So CS means class size. That's our variable of interest. In other words, that's that's our dependent variable. I'm sorry, that's our independent variable. And the dependent variable or the variable that we are trying to explain here is obviously the test score of the student. So we have a sample of 100, uh, 100 observations and uh, so these observations are coming from 100 third grade classes this is the estimated equation um, and the, 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 the small the numbers in tiny fonts here um, let me see if I can zoom it so th these, these, uh, these numbers in tiny fonts these are the standard errors so 20.4 is the standard error of the vertical intercept, 520.4. Similarly, 2.21, this is the standard error of uh, the slope coefficient, 5.82. Okay, so the first question says a classroom has 22 students. What is the regression's prediction for the classroom's average test score? Uh, I went over this one in the class, so uh, it, it, it wasn't a difficult one, so uh, let's just quickly go over this one more time just for the sake of completeness. So the test score hat equals 520.4 minus 5.82 times CS as the question has specified. So because this, the question says that it has a classroom of uh, 22 students, so you just put CS equals 22 here and work this out. So this is equal to 392.36, so the estimated test score when the class score or the expected uh, estimated or estimated expected test score when the class size is 22 is equal to 392.36 so that's how you interpret this number that is the expected predicted uh, <coughs> sorry the estimated predicted test score is 392.6 when a class has a size of 22 students okay uh, let's move to the next question uh, last year a classroom had 19 students and this year it has 23 students the question is what is the regression's prediction for the change in the classroom average test score as I told you in the class there are two different ways of solving this one is a more straightforward way and it's a, it's a, it's a longer way but it, it's more straightforward another one is a shortcut method so uh, because I already talked about the longer way in the class I'll skip that and just talk about the shorter uh, the shortcut method so the so changes in test score, so this delta sign here, it, it means change. So change in test score equals negative 5.82. So negative 5.82 is just this uh, slope coefficient here, negative 5.82. So this negative slope, uh, 5.82 slope coefficient comes here. So negative 5.82 times uh, the class size this year is 23. So you take 23 first. Oops, sorry. So 23 minus the previous year's class size, which is 19. So it, it, intuitively, it also makes sense because la if last year the class size was 19, then the class size is increased by four, or four, or four students this year. So nine, from 19 to 23 is four, is four. So you just multiply the so slope coefficient by that four. That gives you the change in the test score, which is negative 23.28. So um, if the class size increases from 19 to 23 students, then you expect the test score to fall by 23.28 points. Okay, so that's that's easy. Let's move to question C, which created a bit of confusion in the class. I hope this video tutorial clarifies everything. So this question says construct a 95% confidence interval for the slope coefficient B1. Uh, <clears throat> so the formula that we use for confidence intervals for regression coefficients is given by this. So B1 hat is estimated value of the slope coefficient that is 
So the value of that is negative 5.82 as specified in the question. So you have this uh, estimated slope coefficient b1 hat plus minus uh, the t alpha over 2. I'll come back to this in a moment. Times the standard error of, oh, it should be a b1 hat here. I just wrote b1, it should rather be b1 hat. And the standard error of b1 hat is also given to us. It's 2.21 because, can just let's just go back to the question. You can see uh, here we have this small, uh, this 2.21 in tiny fonts right below the slope coefficient indicating the standard error. So 2.21 is the standard error of b1. And let's figure this thing out now, the, t, the value of this t alpha over 2. So alpha here is equal to 5% because it's a 95% confidence interval. Therefore, alpha equals 5% because 100 minus 95 is 5%. Then 5% 5 divided by 2 is 2.5%, which basically means 0 0.025. Um, so let's have a look at the t-table then. Here's a t-table. We are looking at one tail equals 0 0.025. This is this is the column that we'll be looking at. Uh, what about the row? So to determine the row, we have to we have to first find out the degrees of freedom. How many observations do we have in this question? In this question, we have hundred observations. Let's go back to the question again. So we have hundred third grade classes. So n equals hundred. Therefore, the degrees of freedom here should be n minus 2, that is 100 minus 2 equals 98. Now, previously, when we were uh, calculating these degrees of freedom <coughs> in other cases, not in the case, not in the case of uh, regression coefficients, maybe in the case of sample, sample means or, prop, uh, or uh, yeah, the sample means, x bars, we use the degrees of freedom equals n minus 1. But this thing changes when we come to the confidence interval of the regression coefficients. It's not n minus 1 anymore, rather it's n minus 2. So n minus 2 is 100 minus 2 equals 98. So let's go back to the table again, t table. So 98 is very close to 100. I don't have 98 here, but I have 100. So 98, very close to 100. Uh, and we were looking at this column where the one tail probability is 0 0.025 so let's just scroll there along this column and we see that the probability which corresponds to 100 degrees of, 100 degrees of freedom is equal to 1.98 this value 1.98 so that's our t value t alpha over 2 that's why t alpha over 2 equals 1.98 so we know beta 1 hat we know t alpha over 2 we also know uh, the standard error, standard error of b1 hat plug all these numbers in here after plugging all these numbers in here for when we take positive we need to take the positives and the plus sign uh, we get the upper bound that's negative 1.42442442 and when you take the minus sign we get the lower bound which is negative 10.1958 so the the slope coefficient b b1 is between negative 10.1958 and negative 1.4442. I hope this clarifies any confusion that you might have uh, about this particular question. Okay, let's let's quickly do the next question as well. I hope it will clarify any further confusions you might have regarding that one. So the, the next question says, what is the outcome of a two-sided test, which means a two-tailed test, where the null hypothesis is that b1 equals 0. That means class size has, has no impact on test score. That's a hypothesis we want to test. So do you reject the null hypothesis at the 5% level? Do you reject it at the 1% level? That's a question. So to answer this question, we have to find out the t statistic first. So the null hypothesis is b1 equals 0. The null hypothesis is b1 not equal to 0 because it's a two-tailed test or two-sided test. The degrees of freedom, just like the previous question, is number of observations in the sample minus 2. That's 100 minus 2 equals 98. Now, the decision rule at the 5% level is that you reject the null hypothesis if the t stat is greater than 1.984. So where does this 1.984 come from? Well, it's just the same as, as per the previous question. In the previous question, uh, we determined the, the value of t, t of over 2, it was 1.98 at 5% level but it changes when we move to the 1% level. If it's a 1% level, that means 
uh, in the upper tail we have 0.5 percent because the if it's one percent that if we had the one percent level it's a hundred minus one percent well whatever yeah it's it's well yeah this is one percent so you just divide one by two that's 0.5 percent so in the upper in the upper tail probably in the upper tail that probability will be 0.5 percent <clears throat> so let's just go to the t table so 0.5 percent is the same as point uh, zero zero five. So this is the column we'll be looking at, and the degrees of freedom. If we just let's just go go down along this column, degrees of freedom is is ninety eight. It's very close to hundred. So we are essentially looking at uh, essentially looking at the probability two point six two, which corresponds to ninety eight degrees of freedom. Well, actually hundred degrees of freedom, but since we don't have ninety eight, we'll just stick to, stick to that. And this 2.62 also falls in the column of the upper tail probability of 0 0.005. So that's a critical value when we are using the decision rule at the 1% level. So you reject the null hypothesis if the absolute value of a t-stat is greater than 2.62. Now next step is to calculate the t-stat. So we take an, take an absolute value of t-stat. This is equal to b1 hat. That's the estimated value of the slope parameter or the slope, slope coefficient minus uh, the hypothesized, hypothesized uh, value of b divide oh, this should be b1 this there should be a small there should be a 1 here that's a typo divided by the standard error of b1 hat so b1 hat we we it's given to us the value of that is negative 5.82 and the hypothesized value of b1 is 0 divided by whole thing divided by 2.21 then we take an absolute value of the whole thing that gives us a positive number 2.6335 now compare this number with the first critical value 1.984 it's definite this this stat is definitely greater than 1.984 so we check the null hypothesis at the 5% level again compare this with uh, the se second critical value 2.62 so we see our, our estimated t stat is uh, is marginally greater than this 2.62 at the 1% level so again we reject the null hypothesis at the 1% level so that's how you solve these questions I hope your uh, your doubts have been clarified if you have any questions feel free to send me email or just pop into my office hours okay thank you